The digestive system is a system made up of many organs that work together to perform the functions of food ingestion, digestion, absorption, and waste elimination. I will explain these terms in detail as we move forward. The digestive system starts from our mouth and extends to the anus. This system consists of two main parts, alimentary canal accessory digestive organs. The alimentary canal includes the oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. The accessory digestive organs include the salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. These organs do not come in direct contact with food, but they play an important role in digestion, which is why they are considered essential parts of the digestive system. Now, let's understand the structure and function of each part of the digestive system one by one. When our body starts running low on energy molecules, our brain sends a signal, making us feel hungry, and we eat food. The process of eating food is called ingestion. As soon as we put food in our mouth, the first step of digestion begins, which is mechanical digestion. Digestion means breaking food into smaller pieces. Mechanical digestion specifically refers to breaking food into smaller pieces using force from the teeth. This process is also known as mastication. During mastication, our tongue continuously pushes the food under the teeth to help with chewing. At the same time, our salivary glands secrete saliva into the mouth to soften the food. There are three pairs of salivary glands located in different areas of the mouth. Parotid glands are located inside the cheeks, just in front of the ears. Submandibular glands are found below the jawbone, on both sides. Sublingual glands are present under the tongue. All these glands release saliva into the mouth through ducts. The submandibular glands produce the most saliva. Saliva contains water, mucus, and an enzyme called amylase, which starts the chemical digestion of carbohydrates present in the food. Chemical digestion refers to the breakdown of food using chemicals or secretions. This means that the process of digestion starts right in the mouth, where teeth perform mechanical digestion by breaking food into pieces, and amylase performs chemical digestion by breaking down carbohydrates. After this, our tongue rolls the food into a ball-like shape to make swallowing easier. This ball-like food mass is called a bolus. When we swallow the bolus, it moves to the pharynx, which is located at the back of the mouth. The pharynx is a hollow region that connects the mouth and nose to the esophagus and larynx. When we breathe, air from the nose or mouth enters the pharynx and then moves into the larynx. However, when we eat, food passes through the pharynx and enters the esophagus. This happens because, just below the pharynx, there is a small flap-like structure called the epiglottis. When food reaches the pharynx, the weight of the food pushes the epiglottis downward, closing the windpipe. This prevents food from entering the airway and ensures that it moves safely into the esophagus. The esophagus, also called the food pipe, is a muscular tube that pushes food down into the stomach. Inside the esophagus, a process called peristalsis occurs. In peristalsis, the muscles of the esophagus continuously contract and relax, pushing the food forward. The muscles behind the food contract, while the ones ahead relax, allowing the food to move smoothly toward the stomach. This means that food does not travel to the stomach due to gravity, but because of the peristalsis movement. However, during vomiting, this process works in the opposite direction, which is called reverse peristalsis. The stomach is a J-shaped muscular organ where the chemical digestion of food takes place. The upper opening of the stomach is called the cardia, where a muscle called the lower esophageal sphincter is present. This sphincter opens to let food enter the stomach and then closes to prevent stomach acid from flowing backward. The top raised part of the stomach is called the fundus. The main central area is called the body of the stomach. The last part is called the pylorus, which contains the pyloric sphincter. 
This sphincter opens to pass food into the small intestine. The stomach continuously secretes gastric juice, which plays a key role in chemical digestion. Gastric juice mainly consists of HCl hydrochloric acid and the enzyme pepsin. Pepsin helps break down proteins in food. HCl kills harmful bacteria and dissolves food, making it easier to digest. The stomach also secretes mucus, which protects the stomach lining from damage caused by the acid. Apart from this, the stomach muscles keep contracting and relaxing to mix the food well with gastric juice. This process is called churning. After digestion in the stomach, the food turns into a semi-liquid substance called chyme. After one to two hours, the chyme moves into the small intestine. The small intestine is a very important part of the digestive system. It looks like a flexible tube and is about six meters, 20 feet long in an adult human. This means it is much longer than the large intestine, but since its diameter is smaller, it is called the small intestine. The small intestine has two main functions, further digestion of food, absorption of nutrients, about 90% of food absorption happens in the small intestine. Absorption is the process where nutrients from food enter the bloodstream. The small intestine is divided into three parts, duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, which starts from the pyloric sphincter. It is about 25 to 30 centimeters long. In this region, digestive secretions from the liver and pancreas enter through a duct. The liver produces bile, which is stored in the gallbladder and then released into the duodenum. Bile helps break down fats. The pancreas, located behind the stomach, produces digestive enzymes. These enzymes travel through the pancreatic duct and enter the duodenum through a common duct. The pancreatic enzymes include amylase, which breaks down carbohydrates, and lipase, which breaks down fats. At this stage, the food becomes more watery in appearance. After complete digestion in the duodenum, the absorption process begins. In the duodenum, minerals, simple sugars, and amino acids are absorbed. However, most of the absorption takes place in the second part of the small intestine, called the jejunum, which is about 2.5 meters long. When food is fully digested, it breaks down into smaller components. Carbohydrates convert into glucose, fructose, and galactose. Proteins break down into amino acids. Fats break down into fatty acids and glycerol. These components are known as nutrients. They pass through the walls of the small intestine and enter the bloodstream. The inner wall of the small intestine has structures called villi and microvilli, which increase the surface area, making nutrient absorption more efficient. Most of the nutrient absorption occurs in the jejunum. Afterward, the remaining food moves to the last part of the small intestine, the ileum, which is about 3.5 meters long. Here, any remaining nutrients and vitamins are absorbed. During absorption, water from the food is also transferred into the bloodstream. As food moves forward, its water content decreases. The movement of food in the intestine occurs due to peristalsis. At the end of the small intestine, the large intestine begins. The large intestine is about 1.5 meters long, but due to its wider diameter, it is called the large intestine. It is the final part of the digestive system, starting after the ileum and ending at the anus. In the large intestine, the remaining water and minerals are absorbed from the leftover food. The undigested food continues to move forward, gradually losing water and becoming solid, eventually forming poop. The first part of the large intestine is called the caecum, where the appendix is also located. The appendix contains beneficial bacteria. After the cecum, the second part of the large intestine, called the colon, begins. It is a large section, which is why the large intestine is sometimes referred to as the colon. The last straight portion of the large intestine is called the rectum, where waste material is stored before being expelled from the body through the anus.